Welcome to Become a Financial Advisor podcast with Mike Salvatore from Northeast Financial Network. Our podcast helps people who are looking for new challenges in a new career. If you are ready to explore an exciting career in financial services, this is the place to start. Hello and welcome to Become a Financial Advisor with Mike Salvatore from Northeast Financial Network. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. And uh, I appreciate you sending me over some notes about what you wanted to talk about on the show today. And what I love about it is we're getting diving right into the heart of everything that Northeast Financial Network does um, in its recruiting stages. Is that is that what I'm gathering from today's notes, today's show? That is correct. Right on. Now, you guys really work with, obviously, recruiting people to change careers. So that's somebody who's established in a career that's just looking to make a change, saying, you know what, I want something different. And so if you have someone or it's somebody in the audience is listening right now that's saying, I've thought about it, but I don't exactly even know where to start, I would ask you this. What questions should they be asking themselves if they're considering a career change? Sure. I think the first thing is, uh, what interests would you like to pursue, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Do you like dealing with people? Uh, Do you like working more at a desk? Are you more analytical? Start asking yourself what you really enjoy doing on a day-to-day basis, because to be successful at anything, you have to do what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Second thing would be, how do you like to spend your time? You know, do you like to be in the office late hours? Do you like to commute? Do you like flexibility and balance? So really understanding uh, the difference in different types of careers and how your time would be spent. What would you be doing differently to earn money than you're currently doing? And what would you consider your greatest accomplishments? And how do you think you can leverage those accomplishments and bring value to others? I think in any career that you can bring value to others, again, is going to lead to you being successful and happy on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, I think that anybody who sees the reaction, right, of somebody that they're working with that whatever field they're in, when there's a happy reaction, you get so rewarded by that. Um, and I, I, I think most people feel that way. And I actually got a side story real quick when <laughs> the first thing you said, what do you, what interests do you have and what would you like to pursue in high school? I think most high schools do this. They do like a career event day where you fill out this form and they kind of put together some things that you may be good at or may fall in line with what you like. And I remember some of the questions, do you like working with people? I said, yes. Do you like working outside? Yes. I, I said yes to that. One of my top jobs coming back, Mike was um, working in a cemetery. Okay. I didn't, I didn't specify alive people, I guess. <laughs> I did like working outside, but I wasn't talking about digging graves. I mean, it was a little disturbing that that was one of my top three. I'm like, really? So somebody from, has to do it. Somebody has to do it. And, but from that point on, I thought, these tests are just, they're bunk. That's not, <laughs> that's not reality. Come on. But those are great questions to ask yourself. And, and I'm, I'm interested, you said, what do you consider your greatest accomplishments? Why do you think that's so important? You know, I, I think that um, you have to play your unique abilities and your strengths in anything that you do. And uh, if you have accomplished something where you made a difference, and I think that's really the question that I really should have phrased it that way, you know, uh, do you like to make a difference? Have you made a difference? And I'll give you a, a story or two, and I won't uh, name names, but I've seen firsthand how the work that we do uh, in this career can impact families and businesses. Yeah. I can think of a number of times when uh, a family or a client may have suffered a tragic loss due to, and due to our planning, that family stayed in their home, the kids stayed in the same schools, mm-hmm. college was accounted for, their lifestyle really didn't change. It's hard enough to lose family members, and that's something you can never replace, right? Yeah. But knowing there's no way to stress due to financial strain may make it a little bit easier. So when I think about, hey, making a difference, if you're somebody who likes to make a difference, you can make a difference every day in people's lives when you're in a career like this. And on, a, you know, on, on the other side of it, there's people that live long lives. And, and I like to believe that our people live long and live well due to our planning. So the clients that we work with have had a lot of success and they leave legacies to their future generations. Yeah. So it, it boils down to this. There's tons of careers out there. Why are you in this field trying to recruit people to become financial advisors? Why, why a career in financial advising? You know, there, there's such a need for it. Uh, there's an aging population in financial services in general, uh, and that uh, population has a lot of expertise to transfer. So the mentoring of this next generation of advisor that we look at in our firm, there has to be a formal training program. There has to be mentorship mm-hmm. from senior advisors. And that's the only way we're going to have an impact on our local communities 
and making sure that they're fiscally responsible. And the next generation needs that. Mike, I think you nailed it. I mean, right on the head. There's lots of careers out there. And there's a lot of companies that would say, hey, come and be a financial advisor. But one of the things that you guys do and do really well is that mentorship. And like you said, the next generation needs that. There are too many companies out there, even advisors, financial advising companies, we won't name any, but they'll say, yeah, come be a financial advisor. Here's your desk and here's your telephone. Now you need to make 10 hours worth of calls per day, cold calling, and then you're going to get clients. And here's a directory, right? <laughs> so start or go out and knock on some doors. Here's a couple of neighborhoods you can go to. And it's just not what anybody really wants to do anymore. And it's just not effective. I mean, nobody who answers their door. Everybody has those ring doorbells. Have you seen those things? They I've look seen at, them. <laughs> you're on camera. Nobody's going to, you know, oh, look, it's a salesperson. Let me go see what they want. We all know what they want. Um, so it's just not effective. So that mentorship and that training, um, I know we're going to get into that in future podcasts, but I'm really excited to talk about that because, I mean, that's at the core of who I am is, is a teacher and a trainer. Um, so that's absolutely spot on. That's what the next generation needs. And you talked about flexibility, right? And changes within a family. Somebody who's in a career now, maybe they're at a point where they've got a couple of young kids and they're thinking, man, this is not the career that I need to be in as a family man or family woman. I need some flexibility. Talk about that. What, what does that look like? Well, this career offers the flexibility to make your own schedule at a certain point. Initially, uh, if you're with a good firm, like ours, you would be in a formal training program. Mm -hmm. Once you're through that formal training program, it affords you the ability to build your own schedule around when you want to see your clients, when you want to do office work, when you want to travel to and from the office to avoid traffic, to go to your child's game. I think that balance in life, again, will make people way more successful and happier and ultimately more productive in the workplace. So I think the firms that are the, you know, come in at 7 a.m. and work till midnight, um, I think they're missing it. I don't think they're getting the effectiveness out of those people. Uh, I think those people aren't happy. So if you're one of those people looking for that little bit more balance where you're really rewarded for the time that you put in and the effectiveness of that time you put in, not the hours, this is the type of career for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's it. You know, how are you using those hours that you're putting in to change your own life and change the lives of the people that you're you know, touching on a daily basis? Uh, I think that's fantastic. Now, this doesn't come without some work on the the person who wants to change careers part. Uh, they have to have certain skills. They have to have certain abilities and and maybe some traits, as, as you, we would call them. Um, why don't you walk us through what you guys are looking for? What kind of traits do does somebody have if they're looking to make this career change? What are you guys looking for? Absolutely. So at Northeast Financial Network, we're really looking for somebody that's self-motivated, has an entrepreneurial spirit, really enjoys helping people and making an impact on the community. Now, 20 years ago in our industry, it was uncommon for individuals, or it was very common, excuse me, for individuals from various backgrounds without college education to come into this career. Today, typically, it's a bachelor's degree. Some professional experience is required, or at least strongly required by most firms. I think that we're looking for somebody who has some professional experience, has uh, an education has the ability to communicate effectively, mm -hmm. but most importantly, really is genuine about wanting to make an impact in people's lives and impacting their local communities. Those are the type of people that we're attracted to. Those are the types of people that thrive within our system and do very well through our training program. Yeah. Now you've, you've talked about work life balance, you know, being able to be at your kid's soccer game or, you know, maybe you've got some kids that you got to get out the door and then your spouse is going to be there for when they come home and you need to go in a little bit later. That's that's fantastic, but what else is appealing about being a financial advisor that the people maybe just don't know? I think once you're in this industry, seeing the impact you have on people's lives, seeing the upside potential uh, not only in terms of income, because you can certainly have high incomes in our industry, uh, but this is one of the few industries. If you look at most industries out there, it's seniority that really uh, is is what's a main factor in terms mm. of advancing and having success. Within the financial services industry, at a young age, early in the career, you can really propel yourself to high levels of success, to leadership positions, to high levels of income, to really impacting people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, to me, it's, it's one of the best uh, career opportunities you can possibly imagine. 
Okay, so you're really, like you said, in the traits, somebody who's kind of a self-starter, even though you're giving them that guidance and that training and that mentorship, they still need to you know, get out there and, and make those connections and, and have those relationships. That's why they, you want them to have people skills and good communication skills, and that's all great. But I think that people, most people, don't exactly know what an advisor does on a day-to-day basis. It's not just, like I said, Used to old school, it was pick up the phone, make a bunch of phone calls. That's not what it is. Can you kind of paint a picture for us? What does a day in a life of advisor look like? Absolutely. So every day is different, which is what has always been exciting to me. And I think that most of our advisors, that's really what they enjoy. I think it all starts with client acquisition. How to how do you develop business? So the first thing is you have a business development plan that we help you create. Mm-hmm. That plan is going to be based around your interests, your likes, associations, organizations you like to be part of. And I always tell everybody, this is not, I think a big misconception of the financial representative career is that it's a sales business or it's a financial planning business. In my opinion, it's a people business. It's a marketing, branding, networking type business. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do on a day-to-day basis. Our job is to really get in front of people, let them know how we can bring value to them, uh, become referable. Uh, let them know who you are, not just professionally, but personally, so that they trust you and get an opportunity to, to show those potential clients what we do, why we're on a common, why our planning process is different. So that's step one, and that's really our phase one training. It's the philosophy and the language around developing business. And then as you grow, um, you will be working with a mentor, certainly from the beginning. But as you grow, you're going to be doing more and more of the actual planning on your own. Um, once you're properly licensed and have the experience needed to do the right job for the client. So really, it's all about mentorship on a day-to-day basis, working with our in-house specialists to learn about products and estate planning and business planning, some of the advanced planning that we do, uh, working with your mentor on how to approach the client, how to present to the client. Um, And again, uh, just On a day-to-day basis, uh, everything we do is about growing to get you to the next stage of your career. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, how much accountability is there? I mean, you you spoke about having a mentor. Um, What kind of accountability can people expect? So in our firm, we developed a career development team. So my personal opinion is um, the word accountability, if you're not personally accountable to yourself, there's nobody else can really hold you accountable to doing what you need to do to be successful. Mm -hmm. So the career development team Each member has a role on the team, and it's really about coaching and supporting that individual to get the resources that they need and to grow and develop in the career. The mentor's role, or team leader, as we refer to them in our firm, we're big on building teams, the the mentor's role is to transfer the skills and the knowledge that they've obtained um, over their years and all their experience uh, to to the mentee. So it's more the art of the business. So from a mentorship standpoint, It's the art of the business. It's how do you speak effectively to clients? How do you present? What is the sales process with a client? How do you obtain referrals? Uh, From a management perspective on a career development team, it's about coaching. You know, uh, it's not the old iron fist accountability. You have to, you know, make 3,000 dials a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like you said earlier, that doesn't work. Um, It's finding what motivates that individual, uh, helping them build a path to get what they want, um, in terms of in their, in their, within their career and, uh, really coaching them on the nuances within the industry and within our firm and how to get the resources and how to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And part of that success is, is having balance. We talked a lot about that earlier. Correct. Um, I, I just want you to kind of maybe touch on it a little bit further when, when we talk balance, why is it so important that you believe a financial advisor has to have that balance in their life? There's a number of reasons. Um, If we aren't balanced, I don't think we can coach our clients to be balanced. Mm. If we're not financially responsible, it's very difficult to coach a client to be financially responsible. So our philosophy has always been we want our associates, our field representatives to live the most financially successful life and the most balanced life because they're going to bring a lot more to the table with their clients. Um, It's easy to learn Um, tax laws and estate planning and products and deliver that message to a client. But I think what's more important, we're not 
just selling products and our planning uh, is our product. I, I think the way we teach our clients to live their lives, to be responsible, to become world-class savers, to eliminate debt, it's uncommon in the marketplace. You know, most of our industry is in a one micro space trying to sell a product to everybody where our philosophy is let's educate our clients, let's help them live a balanced life, let's understand what they want to accomplish, and let's deliver a planning product so they can be successful and achieve what they want. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, I think we see every major industry making those changes that best suit the, you know, or the successful ones, I should say, the successful industries making changes to fit what clients need today as opposed to 20, 30 years ago, like dialing constantly, making all the phone calls. I don't know anybody in my circle of friends and family that answers a phone call from a number that we don't know right? We let that go to voicemail. It's not going to be that important unless we're waiting for like a doctor's call. And maybe, we, maybe we're maybe we going to answer a phone number that we're not quite sure of. But if we don't know, we, we have so many options today. It's not just the phone that had no screen that when it rings, we pick it up to see who's there. Uh, we're, we're much more diligent in making sure we're not wasting our time. And I think that talks about that balance, right? Everybody wants balance in their lives. And I've got Personally, I've got grandkids I like to spend time with. I've got children I like to spend time with. I've got my wife who I love to spend time with. And any of this other distractive stuff is just going to take away from that. So I I value my relationships. And I think that that's what you've been really pointing to is the relationships that you build in this business. Advisors need to be out there. And as, as a coach myself, I always tell them, when we talk about passion prospecting, we're really talking about doing things that you love to do with people that love to do the same thing. Because those are the connections that you make when you're around people that you like because they are very similar in fashion to you, not not fashion clothing wise, but the things that they do, the things that they like, maybe their age range, their goals, hopes, and aspirations are very similar to yours. Those are people you truly connect with. And I think that that's important for every advisor to know that or every business owner to know that that's what's going to make them more successful. Now, on the flip side of that coin, there's a lot of things that people don't know about this career. Maybe there's some misconceptions out there, um, and I'd like to give you an opportunity or platform to kind of squash those. What what are some misconceptions that people may have when they're thinking, I'd like to switch careers, but I don't think I could be a financial advisor because A, B, or C? What do you, what do you think that's out there? Right. I think the first thing, and we, we talked about it a little bit, it was that uh, they're going to say, I'm not a salesperson. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. call my friends and family. I don't want to make 1,000 dials a week. You know, so that misconception of what they've seen on TV, you know, the Wall Street movies, or what they've known in the past to be uh, financial services, um, I, I think that's number one. I, in general, the financial services industry, it, it's enormous. As you know, it can be a bit confusing due to the number of different positions and different types of environments that, that are offered in different types of careers. Um, so I'd like to give some clarity around our environment and what our firm offers and what the career of a financial representative is. Sometimes a firm like ours is bundled into that financial services group. Uh, it doesn't really tell the full story. Mm-hmm. You know, when people think of financial services, you don't realize how big it is. It's all the banks, all the investment firms or yeah. wirehouses. It's the lending uh, mortgage companies. It's the insurance companies. It's tax. Uh, so they're all referred to as financial services. And there's so many different types of positions uh, within those firms, different types of environments. So I think a big misconception is going to be what people see on TV, what it's all about. Our firm, um, you know, to clarify that, our environment I like to refer to is a greenhouse, if you will. It's designed to develop financial representatives. So most firms in our industry have not invested in or have you know, moved away from formal training programs. Uh, they, um, the misconception that you're going into a training program and it's usually an entry level assistant role on a team, which gives you an opportunity to maybe advance at some point where we, what we do is a formal training program where you are in a classroom. We built a whole career development team around you with specialists in marketing, with specialists in product, um, with specialists in our proprietary technology called the living balance sheet, which is a marketing and sales and client deliverable. It's one of the most uh, impactful tools in the, in our marketplace today. Um, and we put that around you in that training program. And then the next things we, we do is we get you properly licensed along the way. So uh, the misconception is I have to sell to my friends and family. I have to make a lot of phone calls. I don't get paid is another big one. 
Uh, mm. We finance the right people into the business in our firm with a very competitive uh, finance package and a really strong benefits package. Uh, so it takes away uh, that uh, complete misconception that, hey, I can't do it. It's not the right time for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a huge one. I mean, and that's funny that you brought that up. I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, but yeah, there are firms out there that'll be like, yeah, you, you can come on and we'll we'll pay you $500 a month <laughs> to start with, and you have to make the rest of your own money. And it's that's scary. I mean, that's, that's who can do that with a family? Who can do that when they're in their 30s or late 20s or early 40s? I mean, it's just you've, you've already got bills that you need to pay. So that's fantastic. You guys provide that. And I want to definitely dive into that more in a future podcast. Um, but I want to go back a little bit to the flexibility. Uh, when you talked about the misconceptions and the things that are there, so many of those hit spot on with what people are thinking. I do want to highlight the flexibility just as, as a coach and a consultant to financial advisors. I had two clients and so it'll be a quick story, but one client was in Chicago and one client was in Oklahoma, both extremely successful, both with completely different views on client meetings and the relationships that they build. Um, the gentleman in Chicago, very successful, very large firm. I would say 99% of all his meetings were in his firm downtown Chicago, and his clients went there, and it was a wonderful experience. It was a great experience for the clients to walk through the door, be pampered and taken care of, and then have this great meeting, and and they really had a good time. It was a good client experience. Uh, My other client down in Oklahoma, I would say about 85% of her meetings were all in the home at her client's home because that's what she liked to do. And that's what the clients like to do. They like to invite her in. It was, I don't know if it's just being the South Midwest, whatever you want to call it, that was different, but that's how she chose to run her business. And there was, I wasn't going to try to change her because she was incredibly successful. Um, but that's how she liked to spend her time. Now the gentleman in Chicago had way more meetings than she did, but her, for her, it was that quality of being able to sit down at their kitchen table and just have a discussion and have that, you know, build that relationship up. So I love the flexibility about what you offer and the fact that you kind of, your training program is robust, but it also kind of tailors to what your advisors are, are looking to accomplish for their own goals. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. I just, I love that. Um, and I want to get more into that training program and, and the coaching and the mentoring. Um, I know that we have some podcasts coming up that you're going to be doing that. Is that something that you can kind of give us a sneak preview of? Sure. Absolutely. We're, we're going to be having a future podcast, uh, with both, uh, James DiMatteo who's our managing director and uh, Christian Dapolito who's our managing associate regarding coaching and development. Um, and uh, you'll get a sneak peek at uh, what we have to offer in terms of our, our playbook to success, our formal training program, um, you know, the different types of uh, technology that we do use, as well as uh, all the members of the career development team. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I know we've only scratched the surface of what you guys are doing, and, and this is really just kind of intro of if you're thinking about a career change, this may be something you need to think about. I, I'm I'm a guy who likes to research the death out of anything that I'm going to make a decision on. We we went to Mexico recently, and I spent way too many hours <laughs> researching right. the, the different things and different flights and different packages. And uh, but I, I like to be thorough. And if somebody wants to take that step to start investigating, how do they get a hold of you directly, or how do they get a hold of your entire company? What's their first step? Sure, you can always call me directly at uh, 908-709-0020. I'm at extension 156. Or you can email me at mike.salvatore at northeastfn.com. All right. Uh, Now, if they're a little bit shy, is there a way that they can kind of poke around the edges, kind of investigate a little bit, a little bit more into maybe Northeast Financial? What's the website that they should be visiting? Sure, that would be the Northeast Financial fn.com. Perfect. All right, Mike, thank you so much for your time today. And I look forward to those next podcasts. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for listening to the become a financial advisor podcast with Mike Salvatore from Northeast financial network. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below this way. When Mike comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Thanks again for listening today for everyone at Northeast financial network. This is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Become a Financial Advisor podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. 
Mike Salvatore is a registered representative and principal of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRASIPC. Financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. PAS is an indirect wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Northeast Financial Network is not affiliated or a subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. The Living Balance Sheet LBS and the LBS logo are service marks of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York, copyright 2005 to 2019, Guardian 2019 87032, expiration 10 of 21. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Northeast Financial Network. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or Northeast Financial Network, and opinions stated are their own. The content has been made available for information and educational purposes only.